Happy, happy holiday. Uh, this is CMI Socials. Good morning. Welcome aboard. My name is Anu Oluwakbo Stevens. Uh, you can call me your social media guide. Now, last weekend was quite a cool, cool weekend. But anyway, I am here this morning to give you five tropical stories that made it for me over the weekend. So today, this morning, we could start with a foreign gist as it was allegedly in the news during the course of the weekend that King Charles' funeral plans has been unveiled as he allegedly has only two years to live amid cancer battle. Now, King Charles III funeral plans are already set amid his battle with cancer. Though he has only been Britain's reigning monarch for 18 months, Following his ascension to the throne on May 6, 2023, yet his funeral plans are already set. Now, when Queen Elizabeth II died, Operation London Bridge was activated to facilitate the smooth transition to power of her son, the then Prince Charles. Now, with Prince Charles' cancer getting worse, royal insiders tell in touch that Charles' final resting plans are timely, you know, at this particular moment. Anyway, let's see how you reacted to this story over the weekend. This person says, Olamide says, camera is real, no matter how long, it always catch up eventually. Now Camilla would be the shortest reigned queen in history of Britain. Okay, now moving over, this one says, the rate of cancer abroad is just way too high. I can relate. Africa is blessed, but sadly, we are just, uh, okay, interesting. And now somebody responded by saying, you're not aware at all. The rate of cancer in Nigeria is now even more, you know, worse. Anyway, moving over to another reaction. Kings for Real says, this is an opportunity for Nigerian pastors claiming to be waking up people from the dead to perform their miracle. Ira Lassan. I'm sure this guy is just trying to be sarcastic with all of that. And Chairman Mathia says, King Charles, please join NSPD. Uh, what God cannot do does not exist. Finally, on the story, classic music says, when wealth can't buy you health. Now, at this moment, we only pray for good health and ensure that things, you know, get better with King Charles's health. Now, moving over here, down here to Nigeria, where Governor Ubersani of Kaduna State has said that he inherited a huge debt burden of $587 million, 85 billion naira, and 115 million um, liabilities, you know, from the immediate past administration of Nurse Arafai, lamenting that the huge debt has eaten deep into the state federal allocation. The governor who disclosed at a town hall meeting on Saturday to give account of his stewardship said he remained resolute in steering Kaduna to the path of progress using the available lean resources, he said. Now let's have a feel of what really went down on Saturday and I'll be here again to take your thoughts. A huge body of about $587 million, 85 billion naira, and 115 contractual liability sadly in, inherited from the previous administration. We remain result in steering Kaduna State towards progress, sustainable development, we have conducted a thorough assessment of our situation and are sharpening our focus accordingly. It gladdened my heart to inform you that despite the huge indebted, inherited debt on the state, till date, we have not borrowed a single cobble. The key priority areas of our government include safety and security, housing, education, healthcare. Now let's get your thoughts on this.
Bala Mood Takai says, it looks like a pre-announcement an epic political battle in Kaduna State between the incumbent governor Ubasani and his predecessor Nas Arafai. All right. Another reaction still. Okay, Ibrahim Ibrahim says, Kaduna used to be the most indebted state um, in the north with nothing to sure about. The governor should think of ways to salvage his state rather than making this noise. The legacies of Nurse Arafai are visible, so it is obvious he did something tangible with the money borrowed. Also, he increased the IGR of the state. Kaduna generates almost double of what can we generate um uber sani should stop this noise and act fast he is just afraid that he can't outperform rfi oh you think so now bayo ojeme says this is going to be a seasoned film that will not end in a hurry please get a seat water more data and probably popcorn stay glued so you don't miss any of the actions it is well with mind area now, indeed, it's actually a long season film, if you ask me, because, you know, after that, you know, video went viral, the Kaduna State Chapter of the All Progressive Congress, APC, has suspended its state women leader, Miriam Suleiman, for alleged gross misconduct. Now, if we could have another feel to this um, particular story, I remember, I remember she said, she was actually, you know, saying the, the whole thing that the governor actually did say is not true. So a suspension letter dated March 31st, signed by the APC chairman and secretary uh, of Malali Ward Ali and Zakai Bashua, respectively, says the women leader was suspended for allegedly defaming the character of Governor Uba Sani and unauthorized publicity of the party's dispute that discredited the personality of the governor. She was alleged to have said thugs to attack the political advisor to the governor, Manjo Maigari. Now, how did you react to this? Let us see. Baba Uma says, very commendable. Right. Now, this guy says, nothing like gross misconduct. She was suspended for criticizing Governor Sani. The police should swing into investigation to ascertain if truly she sent thugs. That's not a party affair. All right. Now, this person says this woman um, leader is really powerful or this woman leader is really powerful. OK, is that all we have on the story? Because I think that's all we have. Now, away from the brouhaha happening in Kaduna State to another story where it was also trending that we perhaps need a change of name, you know, moving over from Nigeria to something else. And I'll tell you what, the president of the African Development Bank Group, Dr. Akinwumi Adeshina, has called for a change of name from the Federal Republic of Nigeria to the United States of Nigeria. Now, Adeshina said this in a statement by his special advisor on industrialization, Professor Banji Oyeyinka made available on Saturday. He explained that a change to the United States of Nigeria would change the relational mindset between the state and Abuja, stating that the fulcrum would be the states, while the center would support them, not lord over them. Now, do you agree with him? Let's see how you reacted to this one. Grill Best Media says, distractions and unnecessary. Semantics doesn't change the economy. The right policies coupled with the political will to see things done is the only solution. Calling the sun moon won't make the day any cooler when it unleashes its hot rays. Now this guy ain't taking easy on this one. I'm moving over to another reaction real quickly. All right, this guy says, I think it is a good call so that all the states can have a point to see unity as a core component of progress. The leaders are not our problems. Tribe, religion, and wickedness breeds and produce evil leaders. For those that would say the leaders are the problem, no, please. The leaders are products of me and you, and they grew up in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Another reaction still on the story. Let us see. Always chasing the form and never the substance. Will changing Nigeria's name suddenly release 133 million of its citizens from multidimensional poverty? 
yet another distraction to shift attention from the problems hampering Nigeria's growth. Ed Rob Global has that to say. And finally, V Large Boy says, what would be the economic impact? Would that make Nigeria united? People are not united by terminologies, but by a common goal. Fix the goal, fix the direction, and we wouldn't need to change any name at all. So, apparently, it seems you didn't take it easy on this particular, you know, story as we got to change in the name. Anyway, so, you know, it's the holiday period right here in Nigeria and all across the world as well as the Easter celebration is going on. I saw a viral video of a Nigerian Jesus spotted on his way to Calvary. Take a look. interesting times we are in Nigeria. How did you react to this? Let us see. Okay, this guy says, your caption sounds sarcastic. A genuine believer who understands the importance of what Jesus did on the cross, which is celebrated on a day like this, will never caption this as Nigerian Jesus. I celebrate the cross of Jesus Christ. However, it is reenacted. It is meaning, um, it's symbolic. Happy Good Friday. Okay, and also Happy Easter as well. Now, another reaction on the story still. Another one, another one, another one. Now, Calvin Stark says, where is the part two? Where he was nailed on the cross. I won't watch that part. Ah, uh -uh, no. Really? Why would I even want to do that? And anyway, let's see another one. Finally, on the story, Real Anita Brown says, Jesus, he is reason. Happy Easter cuties. May the joy of the resurrection fill our hearts with hope. I wish you all a blessed Easter filled with the love and light of Christ. Amen. And she says, hashtag with faith it's complete. Hashtag happy Easter. Hashtag he is reason. Hallelujah. I feel like I'm in church right now already. Daniel Fraze. It's definitely like uh, you got juicy stuff. Let's start with it. Actually, this is like uh, sh speaking indirectly to the outgoing governor. Yes. Like someone, one of the uh, person who actually reacted said, it's going to be a season movie. Just get set. Because this is going to be like uh, the beginning of a fight. Mm. And it's not going to end soon. You know, uh, I know Governor Aero Five for sure. You will hear from him. Yes. Governor Obasani, you will hear from Governor Erufa. Well, however, if you inherit any debt, just manage it. You are the governor. The reason why people elected you, mm. the reason why you said you want to be the governor, you promised that you were going to change the narrative. Right. Instead of complaining to me, I don't see the reasons why we should have our leaders come on board to tell us that uh, these are the things that are not done properly, that the things are done, are done properly. Whatever the previous government did, you were there to correct it. Mm. If you think he didn't do well, call him to book. Call EFCC, get ICPC, let them pick him up. And let him come and explain. But if you are coming to give a public a show, mm -hmm. telling us some monies, they didn't go well, they borrowed, and they put the state into serious debt. Well, we don't want to hear that. Nigerians or Kaduna people want security. They want good food. Yeah. They want to be safe. And interestingly, that, Kaduna has been trending for a long time now. At, that's <laughs> where I was born and brought up in Kaduna. It used to be one of the best states to stay. Mm -hmm. Like, Kaduna is sweeter than Abuja, if you ask me. Well, away from that one, I, I think, secondly, suspending the state women leader is not really called for. To an extent, you know, there's no smoke without fire. It could be that she was speaking in defense of the previous government. And this government, I felt, okay, this person is not in our camp again. You don't really need that. Mm. 2027 is around the corner, Governor Vasani. Just know that if you want to be the next governor, if you want to continue as the governor of the state, mm. please, you need everybody on board. I also love you to react to this um, change of name of Nigeria from the Federal Republic of Nigeria uh, to United States we don't of need Nigeria. It. We don't need it, Anu. <laughs> Let's change our mindsets. Okay. Change our mentality. Mm -hmm. That's what we need at this point. If you change mm -hmm. the name from the Federal Republic of Nigeria to United States, of, it's fine. Or it's fine. But change begins with our mindsets, our mentality. If we change the way we think, the way we reason, the way we approach things, 
the country will change literally on its own. And of course, those of you at the top, I think we should start, instead of changing the name, mm -hmm. let's start changing the pattern of leadership, the kind of government we are running, the excess money you are putting into governance. Let's start cutting those ones down first. That's the first thing I think we should be telling them. Right. Instead of giving one person that is something millionaire every month for doing what now? For what now? Of course, I like the Jesus Christ, Nigeria, the, the Nigerian version of Jesus actually reminds us of those Roman mm -hmm. things, you know, the guy actually did well. But I actually saw Jesus of Nasarawa, Jesus of Ubokare, Jesus of Anu's <laughs> village. But this one actually, it's a lovely sight. Indeed. This is how far we can go. I know we'll be returning tomorrow. Of course, it's the first day uh, uh, in the month of April. We want to wish you a happy new month. Mm -hmm. And of course, enjoy the rest of your holidays. My name is Daniel Price. What's a day by my This is how far we can go on behalf of all of us. Bye for now.